NASA is exploring the possibility of small scale Mars missions for transportation and for infrastructure in orbit. At the same time, Blue Origin is missing its deadline to fly to NASA's spacecraft to Mars. And SpaceX, Elon Musk in particular, is saying it wants to launch uncrewed missions of Starship to Mars in two years and crewed missions. I just want to emphasize with people to Mars in four years. How realistic is that? How realistic is any of this? And what might be the plans for commercial Mars missions? I feel like for so long we talked about Mars. It was journey to Mars. It was That was all the rage. And then the pendulum swung over to moon. And it has been moon, 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 moon. And now suddenly we're talking commercial Mars. And what are the plans for something that could be commercial contracts, small scale commercial contracts to Mars for NASA science missions. And I'm not talking about Mars sample return, by the way, that is the extraordinarily expensive JPL mission that earlier this year, NASA put out a request for proposals for commercial companies to see if they could do it in a less expensive way, a more commercial off the shelf way. And full disclosure, my company was on two of those proposals that did not get selected. So my name is Laura Forsick. I'm the executive director of Astrolytical. I have worked with several clients at this point doing various missions for the moon, lunar infrastructure, lunar services, but Mars always seems a little bit too far out there. Even NASA's like nebulous idea of going to the moon and then on to Mars and beyond has never really firmed up any solid plans. And this has been since 1969. There are newspaper articles after Apollo 11 landed on the surface of the moon. The news said that Mars was next. So while NASA has not really focused on sending humans to Mars since 1969, what they have focused on is science missions to Mars. And that idea of commercial companies helping NASA to bring science missions to Mars has been sort of overlooked recently, even though this has been an ongoing study for the past year or so. So NASA is exploring a way that they can contract with commercial companies in a similar way they are contracting with commercial companies now for lunar missions. Particularly in this case, they are focused on Mars transportation and Mars relay because there's aging infrastructure around Mars, orbiters, relay satellites, you know, things that we will absolutely need as we continue to do science on Mars. Last year is when NASA really started to reach out to commercial companies to figure out what the future might look like with commercial contracts for Mars missions. And earlier this year, they put out a request for proposals. You may have missed this news, but back in May, NASA awarded nine contracts to commercial companies of varying sizes to look to see how they could provide that kind of commercial service to NASA, the transportation, the orbital infrastructure, that kind of thing. Firefly Aerospace, Impulse Space, and Lockheed Martin looked at hosting or delivering small payloads to Mars orbit, Astrobotic Blue Origin and ULA, United Launch Alliance, explored large payload hosting and delivery. Albedo Space, Astrobotic, and Redwire looked at imagery services. And Blue Origin, Lockheed Martin, and SpaceX examined communications relay. The solicitation specifically was not looking at landers. And so this is not like a commercial lunar payload services kind of thing, where they're looking at small amounts of money for companies to bring small landers to the surface of the moon. That's not what this is for Mars. They are specifically looking at how do you deliver things to Mars orbit. They wanna keep it simple for right now. And when it comes to Mars, it's not really simple. These are feasibility studies. So NASA is looking to see if this is even feasible for the kind of money that they're expecting, which is about 100 to $300 million for the missions. According to NASA, the commercial companies that would be contracted would be given the option to fly a single mission costing $300 million or multiple smaller missions with the same total cost. But there's no budget for this yet. This is all just, uh, you know, an idea at this point. And this would start in the 2030s if it happens at all. It all depends on NASA's plans, NASA's budget, and really the lessons learned from the Commercial Lunar Payload Services, CLIPS, which has not been entirely successful. In fact, it doesn't seem to be going well at this point. I have done a previous video about CLIPS and the idea of accepting some failure, so you can check that video out up here. But basically, CLIPS was envisioned to be a 50% success rate, a 50% failure rate. And so far this year, there had been two CLIPS missions launched. Long delayed, all of them are long delayed. Astrobotic was not able to get to the moon. And Intuitive Machines did land on the surface of the moon, but it tipped over. So it wasn't a complete success. And so we're still at the very beginning of CLIPS to see if it is something that could be replicated for Mars. And of course, it's not new for NASA to award launch contracts to 
two companies to deliver payloads to Mars and other locations around the solar system. In particular, Escapade has been in the news recently. That is Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Orbiters. So that's two spacecraft called Blue and Gold, and they were to launch on the very first New Glenn that was supposed to launch in mid-October. There is a slim window when it comes to launching from Earth to Mars, when the two planets are aligned best for orbital trajectories. That just so happened to be late 2024. And New Glenn is not going to be ready for that date. So NASA and Blue Origin decided that they're going to move those two spacecraft off of the first New Glenn launch and instead launch them in the spring of 2025. Now, that window for Mars and Earth alignment comes about every about 26 months, so a little over two years. And so you'd think that if the window is in late 2024, the next window would be in 2026, right? But that's only if you take the easiest path in terms of orbital trajectory. I'm going to link down below a really great tour that Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, did with Jeff Bezos, where they mentioned Escalade in passing, and Jeff Bezos pretty much said that because New Glenn has a little bit more power than they anticipated, then they can take different orbits. So that's what they're going to do if they launch it in spring of 2025. They are going to take a slightly different orbit that's less ideal, but still will get them to Mars. That Escapade launch contract, by the way, was $20 million. Not all commercial companies are relying on NASA contracts. In fact, two small companies, Impulse Space and Relativity, they put together their own mission to Mars. They are launching a small spacecraft to land on the surface of Mars. They had planned to have it launch with this window in 2024, but because uh, relativity space has been a little bit delayed with its rocket Terran R, then they are moving it to 2026. And it's entirely self-funded. They want to create a constant supply chain to Mars. And by the way, if you're interested in Terran R, there is an Ars Technica article that just came out about how Relativity space is moving away from its 3D printing and doing more traditional rocketry. Uh, going off on too many tangents here, but I will link it below if you are curious about that. But it, it seems like the Terran R readiness is the reason for the delay of that Mars mission. Now, you might see a pattern here. New Glenn's a new rocket, so the mission is not quite ready, so that Mars window is not going to be met. Terran R was not ready for 2024. It's slipping to 2026 because that's a new rocket. So when you talk about new rockets, things will likely slip. Which brings me to Elon Musk's tweet post on X about Starship and how he wants to have Starship launching uncrewed missions to Mars starting in 2026. Starship, of course, is going through a lot of development right now. We should be expecting its next test launch next month or so, hopefully. <laughs> SpaceX is accelerating Starship's development, not only to have Starship operational, but also because it's expected for Artemis 3, landing humans back on the surface of the moon for NASA. Artemis 3 is currently scheduled for September of 2026. There is zero chance that that is happening, so it'll probably be pushed to 2027 or 2028, which brings me to the next part of that tweet put out by Elon Musk that said that if all goes well with those uncrewed landings on the surface of Mars in 2026 for Starship, that they could conceivably put people on board to send people to Mars in 2028. I'm usually extremely skeptical when Elon Musk makes these timeline predictions. There's something called Elon time. If you've not heard of it, go ahead and Google it. But basically, he puts out these aspirational dates that are unrealistic, but eventually happen. But in this particular case, I actually don't think it's inconceivable that he could put people not, not landing on the surface of Mars, but circumorbit Mars in 2028, simply because... Starship is already being developed to bring people to the moon by hopefully 2027 or 2028 or whenever we actually launch Artemis 3. There are, of course, significant differences when it comes to launching people to the moon versus launching people to Mars. Elon Musk built Starship. He built SpaceX for this purpose of sending large amounts of stuff and people to Mars. He said if all goes well, then that timeline of 2028 might stick. So it's probably not all going to go well. Back to what I was just saying about a new rocket. New rockets have things go wrong. And so you should expect delays. What is realistic here? I do think it is possible for SpaceX to launch Starship uncrewed to Mars by 2026. They could do it, assuming all goes well with development of Starship from here on out. People, however, that's brought a bit more complex. So while they will have lessons learned from Artemis 3 and Artemis 4, 
um, they're probably going to need to do some additional modifications for Starship for Mars, which will probably not have them make that 2028 date, but conceivably 2030 or 2031, whatever that next window opens up. It's an exciting time. And my bias is toward the moon. I'm, I've always been a moon girl rather than a Mars girl, but I would love to see this happen. I, I totally believe it will start happening in the 2030s. I want to now bring this full circle because if Starship is capable of landing uncrewed payloads to the surface of Mars in a huge capacity in 2026, then why does NASA need to start considering these small payloads, these small commercial contracts, not even landing on the surface, just going orbit, starting in like the 2030s? So NASA needs to keep in mind that it does not have a budget at all right now for Mars. Um, you know, it has like a budget enough to do these feasibility studies and that's about it. So if NASA is thinking ahead to what realistically Congress would give them to do science on Mars, to do exploration, to do permanent settlement on Mars, and that might be outside of NASA's budget. And so NASA needs to think, okay, what is within my budget? Is it Starship? Is it these smaller missions? Is it a combination of both? In my opinion, I think that NASA should be really focused on doing this for the moon right now. Um, but I understand the need to want to look ahead, to start planning ahead, especially since private companies are already planning to start doing their own thing. You know, you know, hats off to Relativity Space and Impulse. Hats off to SpaceX for all the things they're doing outside of government contracts. NASA said they're going to start releasing the results of the feasibility studies this fall. I don't know when that would be, but I will let you know what we find out.